Hey everyone, my name is Kathleen. I am currently a provisional psychologist and I graduated from the ANU back in 2018 with a first class honours in psychology. In this week's episode, I am going to break down the timeline of writing your thesis during your honours year so that you can get a better idea about what to expect. We will be going through the honours year in months so that you have a better idea about what you should be aiming to get done and when you should be aiming to get it done by. To give you a broad idea, January to March is research focused where you will be focusing on your introduction. April to May is where you'll focus on your methods and June and July is when you will conduct your experiment. August to September is finishing your experiment and analysing your results and October is for writing up your discussion and refining your thesis. We're going to go into this in a lot more detail and I'm going to give you a really realistic perspective of what it's like trying to get these things done as well as what it's like balancing the coursework, at least at ANU, so I really hope it helps. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a like and please consider subscribing. And if you want to skip ahead, there's timestamps down below. So feel free to go to a section that you think will be a bit more useful to you. And with all of that said, let's just get into this video. So from around January or when your academic year starts, this will be your head start to tackle the research so you can generate an idea or a concept for your thesis. Some supervisors will have a project already in mind, so they will guide you through the concept of the thesis and you will bring your own creativity to the project. Whereas other supervisors will expect you to come up with an idea yourself, but they will provide you with support and guide you with the design of your study. This is something you should definitely gauge with potential supervisors before the academic year starts so that you know what you're getting yourself into. For more ideas about preparing for your honours year, I have made a video all about this, so go and check it out after this one. Your priority for these early months should be reading thoroughly through the literature. Aim to understand issues from previous studies, limitations in future directions, and ideally meet with your supervisor at least once a week so that you can start moulding the general concept for your thesis. Your research and these discussions will lead you to form a bit of a skeleton for your introduction and start getting a rough idea for your methods. You will probably start coming up with some headings for your thesis and getting notes down in bullet point form. The key thing to remember while you're combing through the literature is to take helpful notes. I've attached a Excel spreadsheet of how I took notes from journal articles for my thesis, so definitely check this out, I really hope it helps. Another cool thing about taking notes from journal articles while you're researching is that you can actually use them to support an argument uh, in the form of an appendix at the end of your thesis, which really shows your reader how thoroughly you've researched your topic. And also keep in mind what your marker will be looking out for. To get a first class honours in psychology, you need to demonstrate that you've critically analysed the literature. So you need to build a story where you're focusing on all the perspectives of what's happened and then present your own compelling argument. If we quickly unpick my thesis, I began with this very broad idea of the increased use of computer-generated stimuli in research. I talked about why this was helpful and then why it could also cause problems. Then you'll notice my headings, they start off broad, stating the issue. I then introduce a model which I took from a previous study and it's what I based my thesis on. And then my headings go into each aspect of the model, I present the evidence, I critique it, and then I summarise. Finally, I introduce a solution to this gap in the literature by presenting my research question and my hypotheses. And just keep in mind, this is a reflection of the end product. My thesis looked nothing like this uh, during those first few months when I was researching and organising the introduction. It was a lot more rough. And alongside all of this, coursework began. When I was at ANU, we started with this six-week intensive statistics course. So we had a couple of lectures each week, a lot of readings, 
then we had a group assignment and at the end we had an exam. I found the assignments and the exams during my honours year to be at the same sort of level of difficulty as my third year, except that the work was a lot more abstract, it was less formulaic, so I had to approach it with, um, with a little bit more creativity than I got to during my undergrad. Okay, so during April and May you will have a better idea of your argument, the direction of your study, and also an idea of your methods. You will reach milestone one, which is to present your research proposal to a panel of academic staff. This milestone sounds scary, but it's actually really helpful. Essentially, you'll be required to give a little bit of background, present your research question and your hypotheses, and then present a bit of a structure for your methods, and other supervisors in different areas of psychology will basically give you some amazing feedback. A really helpful hint for this presentation and for all future presentations is to go into this anticipating what questions your audience might ask you. You can talk about this with your supervisor and then actually prepare slides with answers and explanations. This means that when you do the presentation, you're going to look like a pro because you're providing a visual aid and it shows that you've put a lot of thought into your experiment. During this period, you are also going to start getting ready for your experiment. And this is where the different domains in psychology start to differ. Students in the cognitive domain of psychology will probably be spending this time setting up their experiment and going through their methods. Whereas students in other domains like social psychology, they will probably be using secondary data because a social psych experiment is really hard to do in eight months and they will be expected to spend less time on their methods and the design but spend more time on the statistical analysis and the results section of their study. I guess this is information that I wish I knew back then because I was spending so much time on creating stimuli for my experiment on Photoshop and learning everything I could about FPVS, which is a highly technical EEG technique. And when I compared myself to other students, I felt like I was so behind but it's just that different domains focus on different things. So, so keep this in mind and try not to compare yourself to anybody else. You will also need to submit an ethics proposal, which is something that your supervisor will help you with. And at this point, if you haven't already felt this, you will start to feel like you are juggling a lot and it's going to be easy to let things slip to the side. You really wanna make sure that you stay on top of researching and polishing your introduction. So what I recommend is just setting aside one morning each week or even just a couple of hours where you just focus this time on your introduction because it's a really important part of your thesis. In terms of the coursework during April and May at ANU, you will have finished the statistics course and you will start doing the theory and psychology course. The assessment for this course included writing a short paper on a concept that you had to come up with yourself and an exam. And we were given all the questions in advance, but only a dozen of those questions were selected for the exam. So that's what it was like. I'm not too sure if ANU have changed things, but that gives you a really general sense of what coursework is like. In June, you will finish up your coursework and it will be the break. Ideally, you will have also finished writing up the methods section for your thesis, which is the easiest section to write because you are literally just explaining what you will do in the experiment. A hot tip, remember to use diagrams. Don't just use them in your introduction, use them throughout your thesis, especially in your methods to give your reader a really visual idea of how you go about setting up your experiment. Diagrams go a long way in getting good marks because they help demonstrate your thorough understanding of your topic and also your technical mastery of your experiment. I can't recommend them enough. You will also reach milestone two where you will need to meet with your course convener to discuss the progress of your thesis and your supervisor will need to sign off on this. Alongside this, you will continue setting up your experiment. You will probably see your supervisor a bit less and you will get a little bit of downtime to really 
focus on your thesis, I recommend focusing on the introduction and, and really polishing this. Keep in mind as well that things are gonna get really intense in semester two, so you might wanna use this time to go on a little mini holiday. Personally, I didn't do this because I was quite stressed, but I did take a weekend off, so if you can afford to take a bit of a break, strongly recommend doing this just to refresh and kind of focus on something outside of honours. And as the break starts coming to a close, this is typically when you will start running your experiment. The key here is to stay organised and manage your time well as you start seeing participants and collecting data. One thing I also recommend doing is start to practise your statistical analysis even if you're only using a couple of participants' raw data. Personally, I didn't do this and I really wish I did. It will give you a little bit more insight into your study, it will help you prepare for your results section, and it will also give you some confidence for analysing your data. So hopefully by early to mid-August, you will have finished collecting all of your data. I actually remember that I didn't finish collecting all of my data until the end of August, which is quite late. This was due to an issue with my experiment, and I really want to emphasise that mistakes will happen along the way, and it doesn't mean that you're going to do poorly. It's normal for things to go wrong, so just have this in the back of your mind if something stressful does come up. During August and September you will be wrapping up your experiment and you will be focusing predominantly on your results as well as polishing your introduction. And as EEG studies typically use t-testing, that's what I use to interpret the data of my experiment. And so my statistical analysis was not as complicated as other students in different domains, um, if you have spent less time on your methods and you need to spend a lot more time on your statistical analysis, I strongly recommend using more diagrams in this section. August and September will also be a great time for you to continue polishing that intro, but also start coming up with a few leads for your discussion. As an example, I continue to spend maybe an evening a week just combing through the literature, polishing my introduction, and I actually found a study that, um, that argued against my research. Initially, I was a little bit freaked out. I don't want to go off on too much of a tangent here, but this study was also looking at computer-generated stimuli at a neural level, but I was able to weave this study into my introduction, and then I was able to also go back to it as a lead for my discussion. So it turned out to be a really helpful piece. And I only found it around late August, early September. So it really does pay to just continue combing through the literature and seeing what you can pull and getting some ideas for your discussion. You also have your third major milestone. This is where your supervisor will sign off on your data collection and your data analysis to show that you are on track with your study. And as you reach the end of September, at the very least, you should have a rough draft of your introduction, your methods, and your results completed. However, it is okay if you don't. I think from memory, I didn't have my draft ready until early October, but try to get it done as soon as you can. It will make your life easier. During August and September, you will also have your final course. At ANU, this was the Evidence-Based Assessment and Intervention course, and it's a really great one for understanding psychology from a more practical, clinical lens. From memory, the assessment for this course was a bi-weekly test, and then we also had to do an assignment. I found this really fun, and from memory, my assignment was about helping Indigenous communities from an evidence-based framework. Okay, so October is crunch time. If you're just starting your honours year, it's highly likely that you'll be thinking October is going to be the most stressful month. Ironically, this is not the case. I think a lot of students find October to be less stressful than they anticipate because they have the bulk of their thesis done, at least in draft form, excluding the discussion. And the discussion isn't as hard as it seems. Plus, you have a really thorough understanding of your research by now, and your coursework will be wrapping up so you can stop worrying about that. During early October, you will reach milestone number four, and this is where your supervisor will read the draft of your introduction, method, and results, and then give you feedback. They will not be able to read anything about your discussion or talk about your discussion with you. However, keep in mind that you can still ask them questions. 
And for your discussion, you want to summarize what you found in relation to your hypotheses and talk about future directions and any limitations of the study. If we quickly look at my study, you can see that it's the opposite of my introduction. I start off narrowly focusing on the contribution of my results. I then compared what I found with other FPVS studies to show that my research was consistent. So I'm focusing on the neural side of my model. Then I turn to focus on the behavioral side and I argue why my behavioral results are relevant. And then I zoom out and I discuss why my findings changed the game for computer generated stimuli in research. And I also talk about some future directions and some of the limitations of my study. To get a better sense of how to write your introduction and your discussion, I strongly recommend reading other honours students' theses. I'm going to leave a link down below for mine, so go and check that out. I really hope it helps. So all in all, I think it took me about two weeks to get my discussion done. During October, you will also need to come up for a title for your thesis, and this is harder than it looks, so I strongly recommend putting a little bit of time aside to do this. You also need to write an abstract, which isn't that hard to do, but keep in mind it's the first thing that your reader is going to read. So you want it to stand out, you want it to be short, sharp and clean, uh, and you want to put, you know, a little bit of effort into it, so make that a priority in October. <laughs> I remember in the lead up to my thesis due date, the main things that I found really stressful was organizing the structure and format of my thesis because this is a bit tricky to do. Also finishing up my reference list because I'd been a little bit disorganized with this. I'm finishing up my diagrams, I didn't have all of them ready. I only wish that I prioritized these sort of admin type tasks more during the year, so again, learn from my mistake. But it is so normal to have something that you leave hanging till the end of October, it happens to everyone. So don't be too hard on yourself if you do have things that come up that you leave to the very end. And also keep in mind that polishing your thesis and preparing the good copy it is a lot of work. I think I pulled one or two all-nighters in the lead up to the due date. Um, at that point, I was really sleep deprived, but again, the work here, it's not hard, it's just bringing everything together. And then when I was done, it was the best feeling ever, and I think I slept for about two weeks. The last thing I'm going to say in relation to your honours is that it's one of the hardest things you will ever do. And when you finish, you are going to feel like you can do anything you want with your life because nothing else will be this hard. It's also such an amazing year. It was my favorite year at uni and I really hope that this video helps. I hope that you get something out of it. And I'm sorry that I didn't get this done at the beginning of the year like I had initially planned to. I am currently working and studying to become a registered psychologist and it's a lot of hard work, but it's incredibly rewarding. And I can absolutely guarantee you that any career in psychology is amazing. So if you would like to actually have a chat in person or online, definitely reach out to me. I'd be really happy to talk to students about anything relating to psychology or to uni or to life in general. So send me a message and we can have a chat. And if you do get something out of this video, it would help me a lot if you do like, and I would love it if you subscribe and come and join the community. Um, I really hope that it helped and I hope that I see you around in another one of my videos. I'm going to stop going on now. Have an amazing week. I will talk to you later. Bye.